It's also possible to make graphs with the software. For example, you can measure how the expected value of a certain decision depends on the size of another property. Like in this picture, how the expected value depends on the race size. For the example in this video, we'll let the software figure out how the expected value for Big Blind will change at his race decision if we vary his bet size. You can change bet sizes in the software by double clicking them. For example, if instead of the original race size of 12 I fill in 10 and press enter, then the race size has now changed to 10. And if we now compute, we see that the expected value for the decision at this race size will become $1.80. Now if you want to research the dependence of the expected value of the decision on the race size, you can of course try several race sizes and make a graph in Excel. But this would take a lot of time and effort. However, you can also let the software create a graph. In order to do so, you need to do two things. First of all, you need to tell the software what property you want to vary. And after that, you'll also need to tell the software where in the tree to measure the EV. We can tell the software where to measure the EV by setting a checkpoint in that location, by pressing F10 or this button in the toolbar, and then clicking the decision where we want to measure the expected value. And the checkpoint symbol is now drawn over the decision. Now we need to tell the software what property to vary, which is BigBlind's race size. To do this, we'll first need to define a variable. For that, go to the variable menu here, or here, where it says xy. Let's use variable number 1 as the variable that is used for the race size. And set it to 14. Click OK to accept. And now edit the race size. And enter hashtag 1, which means variable number 1. Press OK, and the race size has now changed to 14, which is the value we chose for variable 1. And for example, if we go back to the variable menu, and set variable 1 to 15, and press OK, then the race size will automatically adapt to the new value of variable 1. OK, back to creating our graph. So, we have now defined which property we want to vary and also the location where we want to measure the EV, and we are now ready to make our graph. To do so, press the graph button here. And let's change variable 1 from 10 to 14 with a step of 1 and measure the output in EV. Press go to compute. And here we are. On the left we have our graph, and if I mouse over any measuring point, a pop-up will show its exact coordinates. And here on the right, we have a table with the exact values. And if you press this button here, you'll get a dialog of which you can copy-paste the contents to Excel. Okay, and now for the final part of this video, I'd like to talk a bit more about variables. First of all, whenever you have used a variable in your tree, if you mouse over the XY button here, a pop-up will show which variables you are using in your tree. So for example here, we see that variable 1 is used as a bad race amount on the flop, and its value is 15. Also, an arrow will appear at the location where it is used, so you can easily track back where you have used a variable. Now variables can not only be used for bad sizes, Almost whenever you can enter a number in the program, you can also use a variable instead. So you can use them, for example, for stack sizes, blind sizes, weights, just anything where you can also enter a number. There's one very important thing to be aware of though when using variables, and that is you should always first enter a reasonable value for the variable, and only then assign it to something. This is because if you use a variable, it's not possible to check if its value actually makes sense in your tree. If you use it incorrectly, your tree may become unstable and you'll get all sorts of weird effects. For example, variable 2 is 0. If I were to assign it to the race size, then we are now racing to 0, which is impossible. And if I press enter, 
the software will do its best to compensate and changes the bet to a call for now. But there's really no correct way for the software to deal with this. And even if you set variable 2 to a realistic value afterwards, the tree may look okay, but in some cases damage may have been done to it. So please keep in mind, always set a reasonable value to a variable before assigning it to something.